Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Let me yeah. hit present. Cool, perfect. Thanks. Yeah, so me and Gabe are going to be talking about how we built deeper integrations with Airflow and then how we set up a larger demo environment to build a full data analytics pipeline end to end and view it and understand it with Data Hub. So first, I'm going to talk a little bit about the couple of ways that you can integrate Data Hub with Airflow. The first is, you know, pretty simple using Airflow essentially as a cron system to just run ingestion on a schedule. Um, so, you know, similar to how you define a recipe uh, with the Data Hub CLI, you can create a pipeline, give it your source, tell it to push to GMS via the, the Data Hub REST sync and just run it every day. Um, and it's pretty simple to do this and, and set it up with Airflow. The second method, if you hit next slide, the second method is to emit MCEs via a Data Hub operator um, directly within your DAG. So the reason you might want to use this is if you've got, say, you're, you're generating a DAG and you know exactly what lineage or um, you know some extra information about a given data set, uh, you can just create that, that MCE here, construct that object, and push it up to Data Hub. And to, to tell Data Hub about um, whatever you know within that Airflow DAG. Um, now, in order to use this, you have to set up an Airflow connection. This is a pretty standard thing. And then you just put the connection ID in the operator as a parameter, and Airflow will figure out the rest of how to pass the credentials into a, the, the emitter operator and then push that information all to Data Hub. Now, a third way to, to integrate Airflow and Data Hub, and you know the one that I'm most excited about is via the lineage backend. So the way this works is you set up a little bit in your Airflow config. If you see that second screenshot, you configure the Data Hub Airflow lineage backend as the lineage backend with an Airflow and give it the connection ID, similar to how we did it in, in the operator case. And then, in your operators within your DAG, you pass inlets and outlets. And this is a Airflow native integration. Uh, every single operator supports inlets and outlets in uh, the right versions of Airflow. And you just declare your data sets that are consumed and produced by a given job. And Data Hub is able to view and visualize all of that metadata, plus it fetches a bunch of extra metadata about the DAG and the tasks itself. So you can view properties about, you know, what were parameters that were passed into the task or, you know, when was this thing last run? Now, the one caveat here is, you know, it requires a little bit of config and it um, only works with Airflow 1.10.15 or newer or 2.0.2 or newer. Um, because the lineage backend was not supported prior to those versions. And so there you have it. If you want to learn more, uh, Shushan, I'll give you the next slide. We've got a link to the docs uh, where you can read about it. And then I'm on Slack if you have any other questions. Awesome. And Thanks, that, I'll pass it over to Gabe. Sweet. <clears throat> um, awesome. Um, Thanks for sharing, Harshal. I think it's really cool how it's nice that we've got different options of integrating with Airflow. So depending on how you know how much commitment, how deep they want to get in, there's always a way someone can get this lineage information. So next up, I'm going to talk about how users of Data Hub can take advantage of these connections that we have between entities to get a better understanding of the data that they have. So I know that Harshal in his spare time made some analytics pipelines and dashboards about the demo data that we have for demo data hub project.io. We have lots of data sets there and uh, as a little pet project, he built some pipelines to, um, and some dashboards to visualize uh, metadata about them. And I'm gonna go through and explore this and understand um, what he's built and use Lineage to get a better understanding and um, 
more trust in the data. So say I wanted to understand what the documentation coverage is for our demo data so that uh, I could understand, well, what, what, what platforms do I need to improve the documentation for? So I can go into the search bar and search for documentation. And I see uh, a superset chart that has been created gets the completeness of documentation for some data sets. And I can click into that in our superset integration uh, that's been included in the new release. You can go and see some basic properties like the metrics and the dimensions of the chart, um, as well as the sources uh, that feed into that chart. But how do I know that these data sets that are be being talked about in the chart are the, char uh, the data sets that I'm interested in and actually are our demo? Uh, this is when I'm going to need to go into the lineage view to see the whole picture of how this chart was created. So when I click this button in the top right of my entity, I get taken to a graphical view that shows in the center, this is the chart that we we're talking about. It also shows um, the upstream table dependency that the chart is reading from. And this is what we saw before. Downstream, I can also see the dashboard that the charts included in. And these lines that I'm seeing coming out of the dashboard are indicating that this dashboard contains other metadata analytics charts. So I might can make, make a mental note that if this chart is what I'm looking for, I might want to go investigate this dashboard and see what other charts it has. And if I double click on this dashboard, I can recenter the graph around it and see here are all the other charts that are contained in that dashboard and um, these charts that I might want to investigate later. And so going back to this upstream table, I can click on it, get the full name. If there was description or other metadata like tags, I would be able to see that as well. But all I know is this is some generated Snowflake table in Harshall's pipeline. How do I actually know that this table is generated off of the data that I'm expecting and, in, and the dimensions are constructed in a way that I want? At this point, I'm going to hit the plus, this plus icon, to further expand out the lineage graph. So as I hit these pluses, the lineage graph is expanded out, and I can see more and more of the dependencies of these tables. Until finally, once all the pluses have been clicked, I ha now have a full picture. And as I zoom out, I can see a full picture of all the, the, the flow of the lineage that leads to my dashboard. Zooming in, I can see it all starts with this S3 bucket that is a snapshot of our demo aspects. And for people familiar with- Dave, I think everyone helps. wants to just see that waterfall, man. Can you just- Yeah, can sure, you just, sure, sure. Like, just please wait for a minute, let, like- <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, this is here so cool. is the waterfall of our dependencies. Um, and, and, and this is like metadata analytics, right? So it's analytics on the metadata itself. Exactly, exactly. So what we've done here is built a pipeline around the metadata included in our demo data hub project. So as you can see from the flow from left to right, we're starting with the raw data of the aspect. And then Harshall has created pipelines to produce derived tables off of these aspects so that they're easier to consume until finally we have the table that all the superset charts read from, which is a much more consolidated version of our data metadata that the chart that charts can easily be built off of. So now after looking at this lineage visualization, I feel much more confident that this data that is feeding into the charts is in fact the data that I'm looking for. Because I can see from the beginning, it is built off of these core aspect tables that I understand. And I, if I want to zoom in, and I can then inspect it, an airflow task and say, I might want to know, OK, so I know now that the source data and the flow of data seems expected. But how do I know the transformations that Harshall has done are the transformations that I would want? I can then click view profile of this airflow task that I've highlighted, and I'm brought to the airflow tasks profile. We ingest a lot of properties about these airflow tasks, but also you'll have a link to your airflow task 
and the actual um, in the Airflow UI. When I click on that, I'm brought to Airflow and I can actually go in, inspect the code and verify that this code is the what I'm expecting and the transformations that Harshal's done are the transformations that I expect. Um, going back to our lineage graph, now that I've been able to do my due diligence on um, the lineage flow, understanding from the beginning all the way down to my chart, how is this data transformed? I can now finally look at this, go back to the chart profile, click my click out to my view and superset uh, button. And now I finally have confidence that this chart I'm looking at it's not doesn't just say it's doing data set document completeness, but I understand from the beginning through the transformations all the way to the chart, this is what I expect. Um, we got to improve the, Snowflake documentation. That much is clear. Yeah, that's right. It looks like the Snowflake documentation is lacking and S3 is barely there, but our big query documentation and our Kafka documentation is looking pretty good. So now I know next week I've got my work cut out for me. And I can now go into my other charts, do investigations there, and uh, draw more conclusions. So now with our in the new release, now that we have Airflow integration with DBT, Superset, Looker, and other um, sources that are helping tie your different entities together, these lineage visualization visualizations will um, help you understand uh, how your all your data relates to each other. And with that, this concludes our walkthrough of, of uh, the lineage feature. Awesome, Back awesome. I think, I think people are just uh, blown away. So huge kudos to uh, the two of you for cranking it out yesterday and getting it to this polished state. This is really cool. This is really cool. Awesome. Um, cool. Let's uh, move to the next section. One second while I go find my tab. Yep, here we are. And oh, another handoff. Uh, we have John who's going to talk to us about the Data Hub Hackathon that the Depop guys did. Um, and uh, you know, it was pretty cool to see them pop in, literally pop in to the community channel and say, hey, we're doing a hackathon. And um, you know, in a few days they had, they were contributing glue uh, integration back to us and you know, the Klarna folks helped them out. So thanks for that collab. I think it was really nice to see that happen. Take it away, John. <laughs> 